Today, we are going to demonstrate the taking of a boiling point. As you know, a boiling point is a physical property of a liquid, and we often characterize liquids by their boiling points. Now, the boiling point of a liquid is going to vary with the pressure on the liquid. And since these are going to be done in open test tubes, we're going to rely on atmospheric pressure, which is about one atmosphere or 760 torr. So the boiling point that we get is going to be very close to reported boiling points, which are called normal boiling points. The first thing that we do is we're going to go over to the cabinet, which has these little micro burners. These micro burners are sufficient for the types of boiling points that we have to take. So we're going to set that up. Here's our gas outlet right here. That hose on. We'll get to that later. This is, by the way, a, uh, a device which actually lights the gas. We'll get to that. Another piece of equipment we have to have is a large test tube. The four inch test tubes in your equipment are really much too small for doing this type of uh, determination. I clamp that test tube to the rack back here using a utility clamp which doesn't have any rubberized clamps on it. The reason is that often boiling points get to be so high that they will melt the rubber around these clamps and as a result of that it's going to, it's going to melt you and stick to the glass. Okay, so we're going to use a utility clamp without any rubberized clamps here. So put this on like this. Okay. And let's put our test tube in here like this. Okay, clamp it in there. Doesn't have to be too tight, but you should get it secure. Now we're going to uh, use this type of a thermometer. This is a thermometer that you have in your kit. And take this off. Now this is a 260 degree thermometer. I'm going to be taking the boiling point of tertiary amyl alcohol, or 3-methyl 1-butanol. And this has a boiling point stated on the label of 100 to 103. Now, I want to uh, assure you that you're not going to have this opportunity most of the time for uh, your determinations, especially if you have unknowns. But I wanted to demonstrate the technique with something whose boiling point we already know. So what we're going to do then is to take a little bit of this. And I'm going to put a couple of milliliters in here in this test tube. Now let's put this a little on. Okay, there. I have actually about five milliliters of liquid in here. Put that off to the side. And then we're going to put in, along with this, what we call boiling stones. Okay. Now, boiling stones are silicon carbide chips. Silicon carbide has the structure of diamond, and so I'm told they are chemically inert. And we use these because we want to provide a surface around which the bubbles from the liquid can form vapor and then escape the liquid surface. And these boiling chips look like that. And we're just going to take two of them. And we're going to put this in both in there. Return the rest. We're not going to recover these, by the way. We're going to discard them after we've used them. Then what we do is to put a little bit of glass wool into the test tube so that if the liquid vaporizes too quickly and comes over the edge of the test tube and ignites in the flame, it won't cause a big fire. I like to use a three-prong clamp with the rubber on the prongs because they hold the thermometer up very well. Let's, uh, let's put the thermometer in. Now I want the thermometer to be straight down into the 
test tube and the reservoir about one inch from the level of the liquid. So we do this. We'll straighten this all up before we do our determination. It takes a little while. Take your time. The better the setup, the better the determination. Okay, so there we are. We have a liquid with a couple of boiling stones in it. And what I do next is to take some glass wool. Now, glass wool is put in the top of the test tube to prevent the vapors that uh, usually creep up the neck of the test tube to come out and ignite in the flame. There's always a phenomenon which students find interesting. Okay, there we are, we're all set up. Notice the distance of the thermometer bulb from the liquid. We don't want the thermometer bulb to be too far up and we don't want it to be too close. So this is about right. So there's our setup. And now we're going to start the determination. So there we have our flame, and we're now going to heat, and notice I'm holding it. I'm not going to keep it down here like this. I'm going to hold it so that I can heat the surface of the test tube evenly, hopefully evenly. Notice I'm using a hot flame. I'm not using a cold flame. Okay, now we're getting the... You can see as I do this, the level of the condensate is up here. I don't know if you can see that from where you are, but that's where, where it is. And it's creeping up slowly. As we said, the boiling point of tertiary amyl alcohol is, is about 100. And if you notice on our thermometer right here, the temperature is approximately 97, 98. You know when the boiling point has been reached, when you get active condensation off the tip of the thermometer and the boiling point levels off at some temperature. You can see it's up to 103 now actually, which is what we expected it to, to be. And we get very vigorous boiling in the tube. And so I would say that I would look at this and say that my boiling point is 106. Okay. And then we just let it cool down when the determination is done and you turn off the gas. Let this cool down and you can discard the liquid if you're not going to use it. discarded in the waste container. And that's it.